Today, I will discuss about types of strings. And this is really very important to understand the fundamental of machine design. So welcome to my YouTube channel, Mechanical Engineering Management. Let's see first of all the question that can be asked in the examination. Explain types of strings with Netscape. Let's start from the concept of strain with the help of this figure. When a system of forces act on a body, here you can see it undergoes some deformation. So here you can see this is actually the original body and if you apply the tensile force then it will deform. Similarly, if you apply the compressive force then it will deform from here to here. So very simple, when a system of forces act on a body it undergoes some deformation. This deformation per unit length is known as strain. So it is very simple definition of the strain. The deformation here you can see per unit length. So here the length is L. So if you consider the deformation per unit length is known as strain. It is denoted by Greek letter epsilon. So strain is generally denoted by epsilon or it is sometimes denoted by small e also. Simply it is the ratio of the change in length to the original length. So this is also considered as definition of strain and it is really very simple. It is the ratio of change in length to the original length. So mathematically you can say epsilon is equal to delta L upon L that means change in length to the original length and you know that it is in mm and this is also in mm so mm mm will be cancelled so epsilon that means strain is unitless now next question classification of strains basically there are several types of strains but here we are going to consider the important types of strains. So basically it is divided according to the direction of the loading condition. Next according to the loading and next due to the change in temperature. So these are the three ways to classify the types of strain. Now let's see first one according to the direction of loading. There are two types of the strain, longitudinal strain and lateral strain. According to the loading, it is again divided in three groups, normal strain, shear strain and volumetric strain. According to the change in temperature, it is considered as a thermal strain. Now again, normal strain is classified as tensile strain and compressive strain. Now let's see all these types of the strains one by one briefly. So let's start from the first one, longitudinal strain. So with the help of this figure, we are going to understand longitudinal strain. The ratio of change in length to its original length in the direction of the loading is known as longitudinal strain. So here in this figure you can understand this is actually the direction of loading and the object is deformed in the direction of loading here you can see. So according to this definition we can say change in length that means delta L to its original length is called as the longitudinal strain. So if you consider the deformation that is in the direction of the loading then it is considered as longitudinal strain. So take a metallic bar of length L here you can see height H and width B that is perpendicular to this plane. So apply a pull load on its two parallel faces that means at the end of this bar along its length here you can see the direction of the pull force and observe it what happened. So definitely you can imagine it should be like this. 
So the length of the piece slightly increases. Suppose it is delta L. We also observe some little change in the width that is actually perpendicular to this plane and height delta H also. Here you can see delta H as both decrease slightly. That means width and height decreases slightly whereas length will be increased. So you can say according to this longitudinal strain that is change in length to the original length and see once again here it is written longitudinal strain that means you have to consider the deformation in the direction of loading. So here you can see the direction of loading in this direction and in this direction change in length is delta L. So you can say delta L upon L that is called as longitudinal strain. So very simple in the direction of loading is considered as longitudinal strain and perpendicular to that that is considered as lateral strain. So now let's see the second one lateral strain according to the direction of loading. So once again consider the same figure. The ratio of change in length to its original length in the perpendicular direction very important word. In the perpendicular direction of the loading is called lateral strain. So here the direction of loading is in this direction and perpendicular to this direction if you consider the deformation then it is considered as lateral strain. So very simple if you consider the deformation that is perpendicular to the direction of loading is called as lateral strain. So let's take again the same previous example that means this one of metallic bar. We observe some little change in the width that is perpendicular to this plane and delta H as they both decrease slightly. But this both deformation that is not in the direction of loading. But both are actually perpendicular to the direction of loading. That's why both are considered as lateral strain. So you can say lateral strain that means epsilon lateral is equal to delta H upon H and epsilon lateral that is equal to delta B upon B. So once again keep in mind here the direction of loading in this X direction. So if you consider the deformation in X direction then it is called as the linear strain and perpendicular to X direction that is called as the lateral strain. That means change in width as well as change in height that is considered as lateral strain. So if you consider this figure, here you can see the length is change but that is in the direction of force. So this delta L upon L is considered as linear strain whereas the diameter is decreases but that is perpendicular to this loading direction so it is considered as lateral strain. So here you can see lateral strain is delta D by D. So it is very simple. So once again consider this. If it is in the loading direction then it is called as longitudinal and so that perpendicular to the loading direction is considered as lateral strain. Now next one normal strain according to the loading and start with the first one tensile strain. So once again consider the same figure. So very simple. If strain measure under tensile loading in this figure you can see then it is called as tensile strain. In this figure also you can see if the force that is applied on the object is tensile force then the strain delta L upon L is known as tensile strain. It tends to decrease the cross sectional area and increase in the length of the body. So in this figure you can say tensile strain that is equal to delta L upon L. So again keep in mind this tensile strain in this figure is considered as linear strain also because the deformation that is along the direction of the loading. Now second one compressive strain. Strain measure under 
compressive loading here you can see is known as compressive strain so very simple if the deformation is due to the compressive force then it is called as the compressive strain so it tends to increase the cross section area but decrease the length of the body so you can say compressive strain is equal to delta l upon l from the figure b so very simple here figure a represent as the tensile strain and figure b represent as compressive strain so as we have discussed in the previous section in both the figure a and b the strain produced are considered as linear strain because here you can see in the both figure the deformation is along the direction of the loading now we turn for the shear strain when the shear stress is applied on a body it tends to deform the shape of the body as shown in the figure so here you can see this is the original figure of the body now if you apply the shear force in this direction and in this direction then it will deform like this here this red dotted line represent as the deformed shape and this black color is represent as the original body so due to this shear force it will deform like this so the change in tangential angle here you can see in the direction of loading is called as shear strain and that is denoted by phi so look at once again very important word tangential angle so you can say tan phi is equal to opposite side upon adjacent side that means delta l upon l and here this phi is actually very small angle so you can say tan phi is nearly equal to phi so ultimately you can say shear strain phi is equal to delta l upon l in another word you can say it is the relative displacement between two parallel planes here you can see delta l is the relative displacement between two parallel planes per unit distance between parallel planes that means l so you can say delta l upon l in this figure you can see this is the shear force applied on the body and there will be the deformation and so that you can say there is a relative displacement between these two parallel planes that is delta x so you can say tan phi is equal to delta x upon unit distance between parallel planes that means h next one volumetric strain so consider this figure to understand volumetric strain the ratio of change in volume to the original volume under normal loading condition is known as volumetric strain normal loading condition that means the load that is acting perpendicular to the plane always that is called as the normal loading condition so in this case if there is a change in volume then you can consider it as a volumetric strain so mathematically you can say volumetric strain that is equal to change in volume to the original volume. here you can see this black dotted line represent as the original volume and this brown color that is represent as final volume that means capital v minus delta v so you can say delta v is the change in volume due to this normal loading condition so due to this application of the external force if the volume of an elastic body is change without changing its shape the strain is called volumetric strain it is measured by the unit change of volume so you can say it is change in volume to the original volume so mathematically you can say it is delta v upon v where delta v is the change in volume and v is the original volume now the last one thermal strain now to understand the thermal strain you have to understand first the thermal stress so let's start with the thermal stress it is defined as the stress developed in the material due to change in temperature so if there is a change in temperature of any body 
then there will be the thermal stress. But once again, there is a condition. If free expansion or free contraction of the material due to change in temperature will be restricted. So this is a condition for the thermal stress. That means if you prevent thermal expansion or thermal contraction due to the change in temperature of the body, then and then thermal stress will be developed in the body. If you allow the thermal expansion or the thermal contraction, then there will be no any thermal stress at all. The strain corresponding to that thermal stress is known as thermal strain. And as you know that change in length due to the temperature change, that is delta L is equal to alpha delta T into L. Where delta L is the change in length due to the change in temperature. Alpha is the coefficient of thermal expansion per degree Celsius. Delta T is the change in temperature. L is the original length of the body. So here you can write alpha as the coefficient of thermal expansion. Now you know that simply strain is equal to change in length upon original length. But here this is the thermal strain. So you have to consider the change in length due to the change in temperature. And you know that this is the change in length due to the change in temperature. So if you put it this value in this equation, then you can say change in length is equal to alpha delta t into L upon original length. Here you can see that is small l. So this and this L will be cancelled. So finally it will be alpha delta t. So this is the thermal strain. So very simple thermal strain that is actually coefficient of thermal expansion multiplied by change in temperature. Thanks my dear friends for watching this video. Press the like button to appreciate it.